to Q3 FY24 earnings conference call of Hester Bioscience hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an, an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kashish Thakur from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wish you, uh, I welcome you all to Hester Biosense uh, uh, Q3 and nine months uh, FY24 earnings conference call. So today from Hester Biosense, we have the senior management with us, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, CEO and Managing Director, Ms. Priya Gandhi, Executive Director, and Mr. Nikhil Chanwar, uh, CFO on this call. I thank the management of Hester Biosense for giving ICICI Securities this opportunity to hold this, host this call. Uh, and now I hand over the call to Ms. Priya Gandhi. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Priya Gandhi, Executive Director at Hester, and really appreciate your presence in today's call, where I will be taking you all to the overview of our performance in Q3 FY24. Starting with a comprehensive overview of our financial performance, our standalone revenue has surged up by 10%. And our consolidated revenue saw a growth of 13%. Uh, however, speaking of Q3 FY24 specifically, we've observed a dip in our standalone revenue by 7%, and on a consolidated basis, we've seen a 11% decrease. Uh, Dwelling into the division wise performance, uh, starting with our annual healthcare division, we observed an 18% decline in sales during this quarter compared to the corresponding quarter. This decline is primarily attributed to two main reasons. The first being the shifting sales pattern of the report box vaccine. In Q2 FY23, heightened demand of, uh, for GPV arose from an outbreak of lumpy skin disease in cattle, resulting in a concentrated sales for Q2 and Q3, with Q3 FY23 emerging as the best quarter in terms of the GPV sales. Uh, however, in this financial year, the sales have gotten stabilized as, as the demand has now uh, normalized. And in the same manner, uh, this has been distributed with a planned immunization program. Consecutively, this distribution has led to a variance between the comparative quarters. The second reason being the discontinuation of our two brands, uh, namely Curex Injection and Isomovet, Due to regulatory changes prohibiting the use of ketoprofane for animal purposes, which has affected our sales of the health products in the division in this quarter, these two products collectively contributed to about 4.5 crores in sales in nine months in FY23 last year. Um, uh, however, moving forward in response to this challenge, we have introduced a new product called Curex LA as a substitute in the last quarter, in fact, I had mentioned this in the last uh, call that we will be introducing the substitute for Curex, and uh, we did that in the last quarter. And the positive impact of this introduction is now going to, uh, you know, be more evident in Q4 and beyond. Uh, we've been actively promoting the new product Curex LA through aggressive marketing initiatives, including over 200 product launch meetings that uh, we did, which engaged over 4,000 customers nationwide. Uh, these factors will continue into the current quarter for the reinforcing our commitment to addressing the market needs and the driving growth. It is important to note that if we exclude the impact of prohibition of our annual healthcare, division has demonstrated an impressive 17% growth in the health product sales. Additionally, we are currently in process of launching line extensions of our existing products, and we anticipate these new offerings to mitigate the sales loss resulting from the withdrawal of the mentioned brand, further strengthening our product portfolio and driving a sustained growth. The PPR and GPV immunization programs with the Government of India are on track as per the predetermined schedule and we are committed towards the well-being of the livestock population across the nation. Turning on to our poultry healthcare division, we are happy to report an 8% growth. This marks the milestone as after seven quarters, we are witnessing a growth across the entire segment, that is the poultry segment. While uh, only the trade business showed a growth in last quarter, this quarter we are feeling positive to see a growth across the division as a whole. 
as previously as previously mentioned the indian poultry industry is experiencing an upward trajectory uh, driven by sustained consumer demand and stable prices of meat and egg products this positive trend highlights the resilience of our poultry health division and positions us well for continued success in this sector i had also mentioned in the last call that we are set to launch a modified version of the new castle of the new castle disease vaccine which is a critical component in the poultry health uh, which has been already launched in the market for the strengthening strengthening our efforts to enhance our performance in the division looking ahead this we remain optimistic about the growth of our operations in the poultry division we are diligently monitoring the performance of our products and providing comprehensive technical support in the field additionally we are also in process of acquiring technology from icar ivri to develop a modified version of this vaccine called infectious bursal disease vaccine which is a which is a vaccine which already exists in our portfolio for a modified version of this utilizing something called as a sub viral particle based technology which will offer superior protection improved safety and eliminate the risk of immuno immunosuppression in poultry highlighting our commitment to innovate and ex in an excellence in the poultry healthcare in qc fy24 the pet care division has experienced a slight decline however when considering the cumulative performance for 9 months the division demonstrated an impressive overall growth of 9% 91% the division commenced last year in q2 q2 fy23 that is and thus far we focused on establishing a solid foundation including refining our workforce enhancing sales distribution and targeting the right markets we are surely gaining a better understanding of our operations overall this year our products are competitively priced and are of excellent quality positioning us well in the market we are also working towards introducing a new ca category of pet products to further enrich our division uh, the details of which we will announce in the next quarter call despite the downturn in the pet market following covid-19 characterized by a decrease decrease in pet ownership and reduced demand for pet care products and this is something which is not really on record or you may not find any publication to back this up but this has been our overall observation wherein the pet ownership definitely has seen a decrease post covid uh, but having said that the division performance since the time we launched the division definitely shows a potential to capture the market uh, for future growth and we remain very optimistic about this division's trajectory Speaking of financial performance, we have maintained an overall gross profit margin of 67% in QCFI24. However, the EBITDA and PAT have experienced a decrease of 7 and 5% during this period. Uh, we've been mentioning this for some time now. We've been trying to rationalize our product mix, uh, which has also been seeing a little bit of shift in the profitability. Uh, also, the withdrawal of the two products in the animal healthcare division due to the regulatory changes. uh and our emphasis on expanding the sales of health products across the division has caused this shift also i think last year in qc there were a lot of one time spots we saw whether we speak of the ptr uh, vaccine or the gorpox vaccine which of course this, this time onwards has gotten very stabilized as i mentioned earlier uh, so these few things uh, definitely you know give us reason to believe that now we will see a little bit stability in the profitability as well Uh, moving on to the subsidiary performance uh, of the quarter hester nepal has generated 0.8 crore in quarter 3 fy24 and 8.1 crore in uh, in the 9 months of fy24 with an overall net loss of 0.94 crore in q3 and a net profit of 2 crore uh, if we speak of 9 months uh, in fy24 um at the moment we are placing strong emphasis on leveraging the potential of the domestic poultry business in nepal which also we had mentioned has a great potential and that is something that now we are going to be focusing on looking forward uh, hester africa has sustained an export sales totaling of 0.70 crore in q3 uh, mainly to the east african countries predominantly to our uh, lsb and cdpp vaccines in kati Um, over the course of nine months in FY24, the export sales have amounted to about four and a half crores. However, the company has seen an overall loss of 3.6 crore in Q3 and 13 crores in uh, nine months of FY24. These losses primarily stem out from the unmet sales targets and the other fixed and variable costs which we have to 
any way infer whether we meet our sales targets or not. However, we are hopeful in the coming quarters, uh, not only with the other East African uh, vaccine demands, but also with the overall international tender, uh, you know, supplies for the PPR vaccine from the Africa plant as well. Moving forward, as previously mentioned, we are committed to capitalizing on the stabilized poultry industry by enhancing our existing vaccine. In our animal healthcare division, our dedication to immunization program remains unwavering. In fact, we are actively developing new vaccines to expand our portfolio and participate in other important immunization initiatives. And uh, furthermore, we are excited to announce that the upcoming introduction of line extension of our product in the pet segment this quarter. Additionally, we are diligently working on introducing newer, larger categories of pet products as discussed earlier today. And uh, we are working hard towards ensuring that there is no over-dependency on any one product segment or division. Uh, with these initiatives, uh, I conclude my presentation and thank you all for your attentive participation and we look forward to your questions and discussions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Dhruv Bajaj from Smart Investment Advisor Service. Please go ahead, sir. Sorry, the line from Dhruv Bajaj has not been connected. Uh, our next question is from the line of Madhur Rathi from Counter Clinical Investment. Please go ahead. So we are not able to hear any. We are not able to hear anything. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. The conference is now being recorded. Is it a system problem or is there are there no questions? Hello. Hello, sir. It's a system problem. The question in question queue there are people. So are you reconnecting or shall we What do we? Yes, sir, just a minute. Give me a minute. I will Madhur Rati, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead, sir. Sir, I'm trying to understand that it is mentioned in your press release that as a poultry segment, you are seeing some kind of recovery. But sir, if we see, then the poultry prices in the third quarter, they have actually declined quarter on quarter. And even in the fourth quarter, farm gate prices are uh, in the negative. So, I mean, uh, the, the whole industry is making losses, so, so basically when do you foresee a recovery in the poultry division? 
No, no, you are, uh, this is Rajiv Gandhi, and what, uh, can you repeat, your, your voice was too much mouth. Sir, I hope my voice is audible now. Yes. Sir, my question is pertaining to our domestic poultry vaccine division. Sir, the poultry prices in the third quarter, domestically, they declined quarter on quarter and the whole industry is in losses. And even in the fourth quarter, domestic poultry prices are, uh, the farm gate prices are, the, are still in losses. So, so basically, when do we foresee recovery? And sir, is there any possibility of our vaccine division, poultry domestic vaccine sales picking up without domestic poultry prices picking up? Uh, okay, so your question is more on the poultry industry and your concern on the poultry product prices. Have I understood it right? Sir, my question is that whether our business can recover without the domestic poultry prices, broiler meat prices going up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> we are on the road to recovery. In fact, if you would have heard Priya Gandhi speak, she did mention that there is an up, uh, upswing in our uh, uh, poultry sales of vaccines as well as on health products. So, uh, we are now <clears throat> confident that... Uh, <clears throat> There is an up, uh, upswing towards this. Another point to be noted is that the feed prices have now stabilized, rather gone down in some cases. So it is a big relief to poultry farmers at this point of time. So the egg prices are even up. So, so basically, sir, quarter on quarter, our domestic poultry division sales are also down from 36.6 crore to 34.6 crore. So, so what is the outlook for the fourth quarter as well as for FY25 for our poultry division? What kind of growth are you expecting? Yeah, now our outlook is that now poultry has started the upswing and we see a very positive trend towards poultry <coughs> uh, vaccines and health products sales and we are confident it will continue in the next financial year throughout. So, uh, so, so uh, would you like to quantify any kind of uh, number like 10% growth, 15% growth, what kind of growth are you expecting? Uh, we as a company, we are uh, looking at a high growth, uh, but it would not be appropriate for us to, you know, make a percentage uh, commitment on a call like this because uh, it would just be rather inappropriate to make a call without, uh, um, I mean, we have done all our calculations, everything internally, but it, uh, I, I, we see a double digit growth for sure. And if you see them from a few four voice is not clear, we can't hear you properly. Sir, I hope my voice is audible now. Yes. Sir, so in Q4 of FY21, the three years back, sir, we did 53 crore revenue in our poultry division, which has now come down to uh, some uh, less than 35 crore. Sir, so by when do you foresee our quarterly poultry division revenue again go back to the peak sale of 53 crore per quarter that we did in Q4 FY21? Uh, see, you are referring to a quarter when there was an outbreak in the country on avian influenza and there was a very big demand for poultry vaccines and health products towards uh, curative and preventive control of avian influenza. So if there is an outbreak, you, um, it can definitely shoot up at any point of time. So um, um, we can't force, uh, we cannot predict an outbreak. But let's put outbreaks on a side. We cannot have the basis of an outbreak sale as the basis of our uh, whole business. Poultry division is now growing and it will continue growing. So uh, just to add on to this, 2021 in poultry is something similar to what we are seeing in animal health in 
23 and 24 you know the lumpy skin disease outbreak as we mentioned you know the the one of first that we see which are basis of particular disease outbreak i mean of course it is a good benchmark to have but that ka, like our performance cannot just be calculated or evaluated just on such an external factor sure sir uh, and also sir lastly sir in our animal health division uh, like you have mentioned that uh, the two products which have been banned we have launched another curlex substitute so so how much time in your judgment it will take for this new product to claw back our uh, sales that we have lost i think it is i mean it's very difficult really to say in like, I, i mean i can't tell you in one or two quarters but i mean already it's showing very promising results and in q4 whatever efforts that we had have we have taken in terms of uh the launch uh, strategies that we had with the in in the field etc is definitely going to show us a results in the next q4 um i think in the next one year i think oh, it should be able to replace it yeah we should be able to neutralize the negative impact in one year strike so so thank you very much and best of luck thank you thank you Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Manish Gupta from Solidarity. Please go ahead, sir. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity, uh, Mr. Gangi. My question was on our Africa business. Uh, now we've got the plants in place. Uh, the registrations are coming in place. Do you see availability of dollars uh, in, in African countries uh, as a constraint? Uh, as a new constraint that might come up, that might uh, act as a hurdle on our ability to fill out that entire plant. Then, uh, what you have uh, perceived is definitely true. Countries do not have foreign exchange. Uh, in fact, uh, three of the countries where we have uh, reasonable large size orders, namely Egypt, Ethiopia, Nigeria. all the three have a dollar constraint at this point of time so <clears throat> yes it is a world order that we have to live with and uh, we are trying to cope with the situation uh, in these uh, circumstances but having said that the poultry the cattle industry has to grow in those countries or even has to be kept at the bare minimum level so i am sure in days to come uh we will find solutions um, because this cannot become a permanent feature and on the second hand on the second side we are ourselves pushing a lot of domestic sales in tanzania itself so that is also an aspect which uh, we are looking at at the moment there is no um, trade agreement between these two car between these Tanzania and a few other countries in do transaction in the local currency uh, with India now Tanzania India and Tanzania there is always that uh, it is also move towards that direction so let us see how does the world get to adjust itself in this current scenario um, it's a macro issue <clears throat> and uh, you know given all these global conflicts that we are seeing now and uh, you know the need for countries also to fund reconstruction in ukraine rebuilding gaza do you see you know again i guess our ppr orders are also dependent on uh, the un getting funding from global powers so what's your considered view on the ppr opportunity now in light of how the world is changing uh i tell you there are financial constraints that the united nations also has we are all aware of it uh, there is nothing uh, new in this what we have done is we are pushing trade uh, pushing sales through the private channel all across we are now trying to create our distributors and make sure that we go by the private route uh, one thing is that that the rate that we get uh, um uh, in uh, uh, uh you know through the private sector are definitely higher than that as far as uh, uh, 
uh, the rates that we are offering into tenders. But of course, there is a market creation activity also uh, that is uh, required. So uh, uh, that's the way we are working towards it. And just to clarify, if at all uh, you may not be aware, or if you are aware, I do not know, EPR as a disease is not there in EU. EU and the West, uh, the Northern Hemisphere, are mainly the financiers, the funding agencies, the developed countries to you know, for United Nations, and also some of these countries do um, direct funding with African countries. So, I mean, just to make you aware of that. Yes, sir. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dhruv Bajaj from SmartSense Investment Advisor. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Audible, sir, now? Yes. Okay, thanks for the opportunity. So, I wanted to understand the FAO situation a little better. So, since it has been close to now seven to eight years that we have been guiding for better FAO orders in the coming years. And meanwhile, we have used the domestic market of Nepal to use our assets. But now, since Indian government is actually ramping up its PPR vaccine orders, so I wanted to understand how big is the Indian opportunity and if we have any scope of utilizing the Nepal facility for our domestic market or the current capacity in India is enough to meet the current demand. Uh, the PPR vaccine in India is manufactured from the Sungri strain. The PPR vaccine in Nepal for the world market is manufactured with the Nigerian strain. So the strains are different, so we are not looking at uh, importing uh, the vaccines into uh, India from Nepal. Had this issue not been there, probably there would have not been a plant in Nepal to cater uh, internationally. Talking about the PPR demand uh, worldwide, the United Nations is slow at this point of time in uh, putting out tenders, etc. We are working towards it. But as I just answered in the previous call, we are now aiming at the private sector, creating demand, making sure distribution is there if the vaccine reaches up to the last mile. Uh, so that is also an area which we are working on. And I firmly believe that if people like us who produce animal vaccines put efforts towards that rather than just waiting for tenders to come, it will be a much better thing for the suppliers as well as for the actual uh, users. Like, for example, in India, in the poultry industry, there is hardly any government intervention, and most of the poultry is immunized using medicines, health products, etc. today. So, <clears throat> ultimately, the world will have to move towards this private market and self-procurement and self-vaccination, so that's an area which we are working on at this point of time. So the results cannot come immediately, but this is the basis of creating a very strong foundation for marketing and distribution. Got it, so that helps sir. And sir, I wanted to understand, so what products have we commercialized in the African market? Since if I remember correctly, we were producing both type of variants of PPR vaccine there. So. Uh, we are only producing the Nigerian strain of PPR vaccine over there. Then we have uh, contagious bovine pleuronemonia, pleuronemonia disease vaccine. We have lumpy skin disease. Then in the poultry, we have the Lasota strain, the Newcastle strain, the Gamboro strain. We have CCPP, uh, that is contagious uh, caprine, uh, it can be, uh, pleuronemonia. Sorry, I'm, uh, I, I forget these scientific names, not being a scientist myself. Um, and uh, we are also, and, and sheep and goat pox vaccine. Got it, sir. Got it. And sir, regarding the dollar constraint that you mentioned earlier, which has actually impacted your sales in the African region. So I actually asked this question in the previous phone call, where you mentioned that we won't be affected too much since we are using rupees for trade. So can you please explain the current scenario and what's the strategy? I'm a little confused. No, 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 no. I do not think I would have mentioned that we are uh, some. Uh, no, no, we are not mentioned any rupee trade in African country. It is just that Tanzania and India have a rupee trade agreement. We are not in a position to trade in rupee in uh, Egypt or uh, 
Nigeria or Ethiopia, which are our uh, markets. Okay. I don't think that. Okay. And is there any updates on the commercialization of our human vaccine facility? Uh, the human vaccine facility, we have applied not only us, all the people under this scheme who had set up projects to manufacture the bulk antigen or the drug substance for co-vaccine have all applied towards repurposing of the facility. Our file is with the Department of Biotechnology and within a month's time we will get a concurrence to use this facility for other, um, uh, for other uh, use, repurposing it. Okay, sir. So have we considered a scenario wherein if we get a right price for the facility, then we might as well sell the human vaccine facility to some other players since we really have sufficient yeah. capacity both in the domestic and export market. And balance sheet is actually pretty uh, levered. No, 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 no. There is no plan, desire or even thought of uh, selling off any of these facilities. It is a facility to generate antigen, whether it is human, whether it is veterinary. An antigen generating facility is more or less common. We have enough avenues to use this facility. Once it is repurposed, we will take on towards looking at other vaccines. And uh, uh, it is one of the only BSL-3 laboratories available in the country. And uh, um, we are working on it for the repurposing. Okay, so that is very encouraging. And if I can just squeeze in another question. So I just wanted to understand, like, how is our management team placed in terms of how are we operating both the Indian operations, which is currently going through some consolidation, as well as our African unit, wherein it is looking like a substantial time will be required to penetrate or rather uh, create a market going forward. No, you are asking about our bandwidth, our uh, human resources capability. Yes, sir. So I just wanted to understand uh, that, for example, if someone is looking after African units, so who is looking into Indian operations? Yeah, yeah, to yeah, we have idea. a manager who is head of Africa operations. We have a manager who is uh, um, in charge of uh, Nepal. Uh, so we have... Um, uh, no, no, I mean your question, uh, we, we have the bandwidth and we are in it, so we have the bandwidth. Got it, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Richa from Equity Master, please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. In your press release, you have mentioned something about Newcastle uh, disease that you are launching a modified version of it. I just wanted to know how big it was for you and in the modified version, what kind of, how does this opportunity for you? Yeah, uh, we are talking about the Newcastle disease genotype, uh, some uh, modified uh, vaccine. Yeah. Uh, it is, so, uh, that, yeah, okay, let, let so, me ask. Yeah, so the Newcastle disease vaccine, ma'am, if you see, uh, of, uh, I mean, everyone is aware, our poultry vaccine port world for cure has always been uh, big in terms of the top line always, and the Newcastle disease vaccine, within the vaccine is almost about, you know, 60 to 70 percent of within that portfolio. This modified version that we have created, it doesn't, increase any of our market share but what it does is it just improves the performance of our already existing vaccine okay so from an efficacy perspective it is better but uh, not really from a financial perspective is that understanding correct um well yes it is it is better from the performance perspective not financial perspective in a way you can say that but i mean that also sort of yields into us being able to capture the market a little bit more and you know compete with the multinationals uh, who are supplying a similar modified version so that is what uh, you know that is in, in a way of course it will yield into better you know financial mm -hmm. performance also right right and uh, sir, uh, in your press release again you have mentioned that you know in two quarters you uh, expect or envisage some improvement or turnaround in Africa situation 
if you could uh, just uh, add a little more color on you know what will be different in two quarters is it the registration or uh, you know something about that and what kind of uh, what kind of improvement can we expect uh, you know in six months uh <coughs> yes uh, ma'am one is registration activities are going on aggressively so we hope that some that will yield on to results and once registered we can start uh, supplying in a few of the countries so that is something uh, which is mainly and all these countries definitely need these animal vaccine if at all the situation improves faster but we could even get some uh, purchases from the from their respective government so these are the two uh, hopes that we are having at this point of time hello yeah that's all thank you all the thank you thank you our next question is from the line of manish jain from gormal one llp please go ahead sir yeah uh, i had few questions the first one was pertaining to our uh, product development and product launch plan we have been developing some very innovative uh, recombinant vaccines uh an uh, update on that will be very useful i uh, yes uh, <clears throat> our team is working on uh, poultry recombinant vaccines and one is in cattle it is the brucella vaccine so that is also a recombinant vaccine um so the brucella recombinant vaccines we have acquired it from idi which is the indian veterinary research institute some of these recombinant vaccines we are developing on our own it is a bit difficult to give you a timeline at this point of time on this but um, i think uh, I, i mean we are working on it and i'll keep you updated uh, you know shortly on over where we are at this point of time just a moment priya even wants to add also just to add on this uh, manish i think after covid also the regulatory norms even in the veterinary sphere have become just as close to as stringent in human uh, while it is great in terms of you know it, it kind of uh promises a quality but at the same time there are certain external factors also with respect to the regulatory uh you know requirements so i mean even though we finished the development but like you know the the post development activity is also and testing etc which have to go to through idri etc that also sort of you know is a is an external env factor which is not always in our hands relatively this all has become much more longer manish ji perfect uh second question was regarding uh, the covid facility uh, assuming that we get the uh, noc from the government for repurposing and using it for uh, other vaccines what is uh, our uh, preparedness uh, whether it will be for more uh, animal vaccines or do you have uh, options created for non covid human vaccine uh see <coughs> a bsl3 facility could be used for either human or veterinary while we have the capability to make a few human vaccines i would not want to mention any names or etc but a big advantage to us if we make uh, animal vaccines is that while this facility is for the drug substance if there is a human vaccine we will have to make an additional investment to uh, to produce the drug product that is the final vaccine if we produce an animal vaccine uh, we can use the current fill finish facility and make the drug product so the two options best available to us get into a veterinary vaccine wherein we manufacture uh, 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 get into a bulk antigen or the drug substance of a veterinary vaccine or vaccines by using it in campaign production and do the fill finish that is make the drug product in our existing line so we tie up with a human vaccine manufacturing company and just produce a drug substance and give it to them 
out of the two our preference would be on the first option because we have a market we have a capability and there will be much more value addition in doing that also to add on to that uh, just in continuation to what i just mentioned is that post covid regulatory norms have gotten a little bit more stringent and this is something we are anticipating which is that going forward a lot of veterinary vaccines will also have a requirement of being handled in bsl3 and not you know one or two because of just the overall bio safety you know just to keep the bio safety standards high so that is also something that we've been anticipating uh, so i i guess it will have to be a blessing in disguise if you know something like that comes excellent and uh, you know you have been undertaking lot of market development uh, uh, strategies both in india and uh, the african market so uh, the current employee team that you all have uh, is it sufficient to handle all these initiatives and if yes what kind of sales can the existing team generate in 3 to 5 years okay so mani ji the situation in such cases sometimes you know you are at a crossroad when sales are low investments are high so the sale come in first or the we create the infrastructure first so partly we are at that juncture uh, one thing is that at the moment uh, we need to recruit people more in the african continent for uh, getting the sales over there Uh, but to mitigate this to a some level, to start with, we have started appointing exclusive distributors in countries. And once our three or four products are registered, uh, we will the registration. We are keeping it in our name, and then we will hire people in each of these countries, and then they will push the sale. The whole game plan today will. uh the current situation where we have got an asset which is not sweating uh, we are just waiting to get the registrations once we get that we will start this ball rolling in hiring people mainly in the african continent as far as uh, uh, the cis countries are concerned as far as the south asian countries are uh, concerned and even some of african countries our international division out from here and with the support of the local people in tanzania we are doing the marketing excellent and uh, also wanted some insight on the debt situation on a consolidated basis uh, what is our current debt both long term and uh, short term and what is our capex plan for uh, next financial year uh uh that uh, let uh, nikhil answer and then i will take over nikhil over to you uh so our net debt as on uh, 31st december has been 232 crores on a consolidated basis and uh, 135 crores on standalone basis and uh, capex yeah. uh okay. now in terms of capex we are at this point of time we are only going to make expenditure which is needed to um, you know rejig a few things to make sure that whatever we have committed so far and whatever we intend to do to we take on to that uh, all the vaccines that are in the pipeline most of them do not need any any additional capital expenditure there is one expense that we need to one capex that we need to do in creating a pilot r&d plant and we are thinking on whether to do and when to do so that is one of the big thing big ticket items that is there rest we are managing within this uh, uh, expenditure which has already been incurred excellent excellent great uh, all the best team thank you mai ji thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen i now hand the conference over to ms management for closing comments
Uh, yes, uh, uh, Rajiv here. Uh, as always, it's been nice to interact with uh, all of you. And uh, we, uh, as a management team, always try to give as much precise, open, transparent answers to all the questions. Sometimes we may not be able to answer specific questions. It's not with any reason not to answer or dodge a question. But one is that we might not have information with us. Two is that it could create a statutory issue in giving some classified information. Uh, besides that, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever. I hope you all got the answers to all the questions that you all asked. Over to Priya if she wants to say anything. Uh, thank you all for your uh, participation in the call and uh, your attention also in terms of hearing us out. Uh, we are mindful of the fact that last couple of quarters there would have been certain explanations that may have seemed repetitive. However, this time one or two points you all must have noticed. I did follow up on what was said in the last call and I gave you all updates with that and I'm, we are mindful on whatever that we are committing uh, to you all. And um, I mean, of course, I think each industry has their own, you know, ways of working, being in biologicals, you know, having a little bit of certain questions on R&D, et cetera. Sometimes these projects and these commitments, sometimes even we don't know the surprises that they come with. This is not a justification for any underperformance, but uh, all I want you all to know is that we are working hard and keep having faith in us. Um, that, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining and you may now disconnect your lines.